This presentation is the first in a series of presentation where I will present Prohn's method and how Prohn's method can be used to estimate the mode parameters. We will, as usual, meet some important concepts. Poles and residues, you have heard about before. Complex exponentials and the impulse response function. To start with, <coughs> we uh, consider the system transfer function on the pole residue form. That is, we treat the system transfer function as a sum of contributions from the modes, and we have a complex conjugate pair of terms with the residues in the <coughs> nominator and the poles in the denominator. Now, if we apply the inverse Laplace transform on this, we get the impulse response function. And that is, <coughs> well, it can be written in this way. So J here denotes the impulse response function corresponding to H. And if we make use of the fact that these terms here are complex conjugates, we can write this as a real function. Now, the impulse response function is the time domain version of the frequency response function. So, if you excite a system with an impulse, a delta function, you, it will respond with some sign exponentially, with exponentially decaying amplitude. Now, the um, uh, zero crossing rate here uh, determines the well uh, sort of uh, oscillation rate and the decay rate of the uh, amplitude here is a measure of the losses in the system. This first curve here shows the contribution from one single mode to the impulse response. When the second mode is added you see that the um, shape of the curve is a bit more rough and that is due to the interaction between the two signs with different oscillation rates. Now in experimental model analysis <clears throat> we know from before that the task or the mission is to determine the modal parameters of the model. That is the system poles and the residues. And earlier we have said that we determine these from measured frequency response functions. But an equally good alternative is to use the measured impulse response functions as input data for this estimation. So determine the values of the poles and the residues such that our model approximates the measured impulse response function as closely as possible. So this is our model. So our task is to determine the residues and poles so that the measured impulse response function is as closely as possible approximated by the model. Each term here is in fact a complex exponential, hence the name complex exponentials method. And as we have commented before, each term is actually also an exponentially decaying sign. And this is what we expect for physical reasons, that it should oscillate and with a decaying amplitude due to the losses of the system. So each mode, as we see here, contributes to the impulse response with a decaying sign. So the complex exponentials method <coughs> approximates a function with a series of complex exponentials. That is sort of the general application of the complex exponentials method, or Prohn's method, as it's also called. So we approximate the function in our case, an impulse response function, 
with a series of complex exponentials. This is too completely analogous to the Fourier methods, where we approximate a function with a series of trigonometric functions. Fourier methods, Fourier series expansion is very useful to approximate periodic functions, whereas Cronus method then is very useful for approximating functions that consist of exponentially decaying signs. So the inventor of this method was Gaspard de Prony, and he um, lived from the mid 18th century to the mid 19th century. And he was a French engineer, mathematician, and uh, his main field of work was hydraulics. He worked for the government uh, by well, with uh, designing and building water canals, water channels. And um, by well, when he designed and calculated his designs, he invented this method of prawn estimation, which in fact has been extensively used in signal processing techniques and nonlinear finite element model. So prawn's estimation method is very often used today, actually, and one can <clears throat> also note that. His invention of this um, um, complex exponential series expansion was actually some 10 years before Fourier. So, well, as history showed, uh, De Pony was um, unlucky because Fourier got all credits for the Fourier series expansion, whereas De Pony is, well, almost forgotten. So, in practice, how, what do we do when we use complex exponentials method or Peronis method? Well, when we measure, we actually measure frequency response function. This is due to the fact that averaging time domain, sorry, frequency domain averaging is very useful to improve the measurement quality. So our measurements will deliver frequency response function. And this means, of course, then, that we have to use the inverse Fourier transform in order to reach, to obtain our impulse response functions. Secondly, our measured impulse response functions are actually sampled at times with a constant time increment. Due to our measurements, we will obtain sampled, discrete sampled impulse response functions. And that implies that we have, in order to simplify our treatments, we have to replace the Laplace transform with the Z transform, because the Z transform is developed to handle discrete functions. And in the next presentation, I will introduce the set transform.